Good morning, BBE. This week on the Jaguar Week in Review, reporter Evan Jones will be taking a look at student hobbies and reporter Grant Gregory looked into the lead ban proposed early, earlier this November to the Minnesota DNR. The Jaguar Week in Review starts now. Announcements for today. There are no announcements. Activities for today. Varsity Wrestling Invitational at 2.30, weigh-ins at 1 at the BBE High School. Having hobbies is nothing new. Sometimes hobbies can lead into careers. Reporter Evan Jones is looking into some students that have some students that might be turning those hobbies into careers. Everyone has different hobbies. These hobbies can lead to what you would like to do in the future. Um, my hobby is working on cars and vehicles. My hobby is uh, trading stocks and I got into it because I read some books and it was in the books so I decided I'd give it a shot. I like welding. I got into it out on the farm at work. My boss let me start welding on some little projects. That's how I got started. If you choose to pursue your hobby as a job, sometimes it takes additional education. Um, after high school, I plan on going to Alec Tech for diesel mechanics. Uh, the additional education I was planning on taking for this was classes that are offered in the cities. I'm going to one tomorrow, and I went to one last week, and I just can plan on continuing going to these seminars and just keep learning and read more books on it. I'd like to go to Alec Tech and put a 10 month welding program. Sometimes knowing what you want to do after high school doesn't come until later in high school. Um, I decided probably like last month or two that diesel is what I want to go to school for. I want to do this job probably for a few years. Beginning of the school year, I figured out we could make more money doing this and some other things I was interested in. With knowing the career you want, sometimes it takes some research. Uh, there's quite a few jobs out there for diesel mechanics. Um, there's a pretty wide range, so I don't know, kind of a wide, pretty wide choice of what I want to do. Uh, the jobs I'm looking into right now are just being either a construction worker and part-time stock trader. I want to go to oil fields and weld the pipes. Hobbies are important for students. They are a way to relieve stress, but they can also give you some insight into some ideas of what you can do with your life. One takeaway from these students is to take advantage of the opportunities that present themselves. Thanks for that, Evan. Earlier this month, the Minnesota DNR refused to put in place a rule changing that would prohibit the use of lead ammunition in fishing gear. Some, of, some are concerned about the levels of lead creeping into Minnesota waters. So reporter Grant Gregory talked to some outdoorsmen to see how this would impact them. Few hunters and fishermen were unaware of the lead ban proposed to the DNR earlier this month. The DNR put it on to the legislature to do something about it. Well, it's obviously somewhat a problem. I don't know how big of a problem it is. I know there's a group out there, uh, Friends of Minnesota Scientific and Natural Areas, they are they tried to get through to the DNR to get lead banned here in Minnesota. Uh, the DNR rejected their study and sent that on to the Minnesota legislature for them to act on. So I suppose over the next few years, they're probably going to be putting together a group to go out and do research on it and see just the, what kind of an impact it does have. Currently, Minnesota hunters have transitioned over to the use of non-toxic shot already around waterfall production areas but are still allowed to use lead in upland game hunting. The only things I use when um, I use lead is really the pheasant load, but half the time I'm using steel anyway. I mean, I duck hunt and goose hunt a lot and you have to use steel, so um, the leftover shells I get for that I just use on pheasants. While hunting would be affected, even a fisherman's tackle boxes and their accessories would also be impacted. How would it affect me personally? I suppose I would have to go through my tackle box and take out a few things that are, that are lead in there and change them over to probably like tungsten, things like that, or brass. Brass is more expensive, but. 
there are alternatives but most still would use lead since tungsten is more of an expensive option when hunting or fishing uh, for fishing we use tungsten jigs sometimes just because they're more heavier and they go down easier with tungsten and lead they come with their differences from being able to get your jig down your hole when ice fishing to some slowly nice sinking or even when hunting with having a greater impact and chance to take down the birds or deer. What I have right now is probably mostly lead based. Lead is a softer material, easier to work with. Uh, tungsten is going to be way harder to work with, but uh, it actually, from people that have been using it for sinkers, they actually like it better. Even for hunting, it's not just limited to steel, tungsten, or lead for upland game, but also copper, nickel, and zinc plated shot, and other shot shells approved by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. This lead ban will likely be something that will happen later on down the road, if it were to actually be set into place. Thanks for that, Grant. Lunch for today. First choice, barbecue rib sandwich. Second choice, hot sandwich. Third choice, chef salad. If you're not signed up for Connect yet, you should do that now. Have a great day, BB.